1997, I was seven years old and living in Reno, Nevada, a timid child in a city made for reckless adults. I attended a small Catholic elementary school where I acquired a lot of guilt and no friends. I had thick wild hair that had never been told no. I rarely spoke to anyone, and if I did, it was about 80s sitcoms. I can't blame my classmates for not reaching out. Have you ever tried to make friends by asking someone how badly they want to kiss Kirk Cameron? <laughs> Even if Kirk was the most doggedly Christ-like figure to have a crush on, the kids in my class were not about it. I was looking for a way to be seen. Since I idolized 80s television, I figured the quickest way to garner attention was to become famous. I had seen Michael J. Fox's E! True Hollywood story enough times to know I needed my parents to take me to auditions. Reno, as you might have guessed, not a hotbed for entertainment. <laughs> my dad once told me he was going to take me to an audition for Pocahontas 2. I was obsessed with Pocahontas and didn't know what cultural appropriation was at the time, so I was thrilled. What my dad actually meant was that we were going to go to Home Depot, a casino, and the dump. At the end of the night, he told me the auditions had closed early. It would be years before I realized my dad used Pocahontas II as a ruse to get me to go on an errand run. But I still felt that my shot at Hollywood was just around the river bend. <laughs> my parents tried to deflect my entertainment dreams again and again. Why don't you play basketball? They'd ask. To be fair, Michael J. Fox did play basketball in Teen Wolf, and I think they thought with all the hair on my back, I had a better shot at becoming a teenage werewolf than a child actor. <laughs> However, my fever dreams of fame persisted. Though Michael J. Fox was a prominent influence, he was a figure of the past. The real beacons of 90s success were the Olsen twins. They never knew a day in their lives without fame. From nine months old, their parents whored them out for money on endeavors like Full House and It Takes Two, starring Kirstie Alley and a surprisingly hot Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> I loved every fucking second of it. 1997 was a magical year in our house because of one thing. It was the year my family got the internet. Yeah. My dad could buy stocks and play bridge with strangers online. My mom could buy pants and play bridge with strangers online. And me, I could create a whole new identity, one that was charming and famous and play bridge with strangers online. <laughs> with my parents fully against my entertainment career, I was forced to take my acting chops to the cyber streets. At that time, AOL had this portal called Kids Only, a place meant for minors to chat with other kids instead of creepy old men because slapping the moniker kids only on a chat room would be a total deterrent for pedophiles. <laughs> this meant that I had to undergo a seminal moment for any millennial, choosing, <clears throat> choosing my first screen name. <laughs> I had landed on the handle, Angel Sweet Smiles. <laughs> stylized with the A's and the S's capitalized to highlight that ass. <laughs> For me, kids only chat rooms were a gold mine of potential fans ready to become my audience. And I entertained them the only way I knew how, by impersonating the Olsen twins. <laughs> you might be thinking, but Sam, there are two Olsen twins, hence the twins, and you would be correct. But to combat that fact, I went boldly into these chat rooms and spoke the truth. That in reality, there was only one Olsen named Mary Ashley and I was her. <laughs> this is how a lot of those chats went. Hey everyone, my agent asked me to reach out to my fans and I love you guys. So Mary Ashley Olsen here. Feel free to ask me questions about Full House, to Grandmother's House We Go, Billboard Dad, whatever. What? But aren't there two? No, they just say there is, so I get paid more. But there's just one, me, Mary Ashley. 
do you like eight equals 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 D? <laughs> Maybe. In the age of internet naivete, I was able to sustain this charade for months. I loved getting rewarded in frequent IMs, in Neopets Gold, and shout outs in AOL profiles. I had made it. I was famous. I was basically the first influencer. It was an exhilarating feeling of acceptance I had never received before. Even though I was living a lie to get it, I wanted it to last as long as possible. This was fitting, considering lying about identity is the plot to pretty much every Olsen Twins movie. <laughs> Meanwhile at school, I tried to keep a low profile on my newfound fame. I was terrified one of my classmates might start talking about how they'd spoken to Mary Ashley the night before. Then again, my classmates were more interested in Pokemon, Men in Black, and Puff Daddy. You know, cool kid stuff. Pretty much no one in my class was scouring chat rooms to talk to the star of how the West was fun. This was around the time my class was going to make First Communion. I remember thinking the biggest blessing of all this was the privilege to eat during church, something I'd gotten detention for before. Now it was encouraged, hallelujah. Before you can do First Communion though, you have to make your first confession. This involves you and a priest going to a room alone together and telling him why you've been a bad little girl. Why is the Catholic Church like this? I knew what I was doing with Mary Ashley was technically lying, but if I told that to the priest, I had to stop doing it. So in confession, I split the difference and simply said, I've done some bad stuff. <laughs> like I was a mob boss trying to explain his career to his young son. The priest gave me a couple Hail Marys to say, I remained an AOL legend, bada bing, bada boom. Then one fateful day, the heavens came crashing down. I came home from second grade and made a beeline to the computer in my parents' office to greet my loyal fans. It was then I discovered the internet had been disconnected. Hyperventilating from the shock, I asked my parents what was going on. And my mom replied, maybe your agent can restore the internet for us. <laughs> it turns out that I had been reported by some haters for impersonating a public figure. They didn't say figures, so I guess mission accomplished. <laughs> this cost my family their entire AOL account. We'd have to wait a whole week for a new disc to arrive in the mail. <laughs> Every fiber of my being was embarrassed. I had been found out, and by my parents, no less. They didn't understand my dreams. They laughed at them. But through that cloak of humiliation, I realized that maybe I had actually gotten exactly what I wanted. I was looking for a way to be seen, and it had worked. My parents were the tabloids, and they were talking about me. <laughs> and thus, a star was born. <laughs> After my star turn as Mary Ashley in the 90s, my junior catfishing day ceased. But I never stopped seeking that attention. I still use the internet as a stage for my comedic antics for years. I even started writing song parodies at one point. Some of my hits included a parody of Avril Lavigne's I'm With You that was called I Like Food. It was pretty derivative of Weird Al's Eat It, but I never claimed to be him, and that babe is growth. <laughs>